Hello, new friends and old folkies. Uh, that was old folkies, not fogies. I'm not going to go down that path. Uh, tonight's episode is the continuing saga of the Smales Pace Coffee House years, 1970-1975. Oh, seems like a millennium ago, uh, but we are as young as we feel. And I think uh, tonight's episode is about the musicians, uh, the lifeblood, the raison d'etre, the, um, the magic of why Smales Pace was a success and why it uh, has en endured in people's memories. Uh, you know, booking musicians is, um, is a wonderful thing because you reach out and sometimes they don't know who you are or where you're from. It's a rather organic process, but in the beginning, uh, I didn't want to use a booking agency. I knew enough musicians around from seeing them in, in uh, coffee houses, concerts, and uh, other venues in, in Ontario, wherever I traveled. Plus, I you know knew people's records and things like that. So it was a rather organic growth and and what the wonderful magic of it is, is that uh, musicians started talking to each other and saying, oh, you know, I just finished playing this great club in London and, uh, you know, you'd love it. And people would tell me, uh, give me contact names and I'd get calls from musicians, musicians' wives uh, sometimes. And it, that's how we grew. It was a very organic growth and... Uh, let's say in um, Ottawa, Richard Patterson was a terrific springboard for uh, knowing everybody in town and getting the word out. Ottawa was, of course, uh, like a lot of cities, full of great musicians. I think it's uh, probably important now just to talk about, re read some names. I just jotted a whole bunch of names down. They're not in any alphabetical order. They're not in any marquee order or they're not in any recognizable name order. I don't think that would do justice to anyone. As far as I was concerned, they were all great. And whether they rose to fame or continued on the road with touring or recording, we're, we're talking about a time and a place here. So let me just read some of those names from Stan Rogers, Bruce Coburn, Willie P. Bennett, David Bradstreet, Lazarus, Beverly Glenn Copeland, Ray Materic, Biff Rose, Bim, Doug MacArthur, Tom Rush, Ronnie Abramson, Murray McLaughlin, Valdi, The Good Brothers, John Allen Cameron, Dixie Flyers, Colleen Peterson, Luke Gibson, David Essig, Lisa Garber, Eric Anderson, Joe Hall, uh, Perth County Conspiracy, Mark Jordan, Christopher Kearney, Jesse Wash or Jackie Washington, uh, David Whiffen, Bill Stevenson, Brent Titcomb, Sandy Crawley, Ian Tamblin, Jesse Winchester, Prairie Oyster, Sneezy Waters, Rick Taylor, David Ray, Gord Lowe, Lenny Solomon. You know, I jotted those names down and forgive me if I've left, of course I've left people out, but we're going to talk about other musicians in other episodes and it's th this is for those who weren't familiar with Smale's Pace and saying, well, who played there? So this was just a, a, a brief snippet of that. I think it's um, uh, the secret of Smale's Pace was making people feel at home and making them feel respected uh, on stage. And I had very strict rules about that, about no talking. And, you know, like when you go to a bar now, I feel so bad for musicians they're at the mercy of the audience and, and some jerk at the back of the room standing by the bar just trying to impress everybody but seeing how loud he can talk. That would kill me. And uh, because I was much too empathetic with the musicians and I think that kind of strictness uh, was part of the success of Smales Pace but the bigger part of it was how we made people feel. And I don't just mean myself or my brothers. I mean... Uh, everybody that worked there, I, I'm deigned to use the word staff. I don't really feel that word is appropriate. I, I, I think they were, we were all participants in this um, wonderful 
period of our lives. Uh, we ate together. We uh, hung out together. We drank coffee after after the evening was over. Oftentimes, we'd either go to a bar and continue the party, or we'd go back to somebody's house, or we'd go swimming, or we would go on a magical hike or a magical mystery tour, or whatever. And that's that's what makes the magic go around when a musician gets only to play. I've heard this so many times from musicians. Uh, they spend uh, 23 hours a day playing for one hour a night. And so we extended that whole uh, part of their stay with us into being part of our group. They became part of our group and we became part of their group. Many of these uh, musicians have remained lifelong friends of both myself and other people who have seen them in concert at Smale Space. Uh, now, we've lost some musical friends over the years, and we will be honoring them and paying tribute to them in, in other episodes. You know, it's, it's never just the music business. It's always the world of music, and Bruce Coburn called them musical friends, and, and that's the way I always referred to musicians that played Smale's Pace. When we, uh, we didn't deal with music unions in those days, or the musicians union. Eventually we did, uh, because maybe the union felt that even though the musicians were happy with what they were being paid and the conditions they were working under, I think the music union uh, want to have their little cut and that eventually happened over the years. Uh, where did the musicians stay? Most of the time they stayed with us, uh, either at our house on Walnut Crescent, which I talked about last night, or uh, various apartments and lofts I lived in over the years in London, all within walking distance. As I said before, we, we walked everywhere. And that was part of it too. When musicians came to town, we walked together, talked together, and laughed and loved together. That's the episode tonight. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you get a little better insight into what happened at Smale's Pace as far as the musician lineups go. I've left off many names. Other names will come up uh, in other episodes and we'll play snippets of their music and, and give you leads to their websites. Or I think that's what we should do is cross-pollinate and promote each other so that uh, this kind of dialogue and, and uh, talking about the music scene back in the 70s can continue well into this century and forward. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye and thanks. Duh.